there are some positives. And you look on the defensive side, especially the defensive line, Kyle Vandenbosch with 12 and a half sacks. No, there's good things to build on. I'm glad you mentioned the salary cap, mm -hmm. but I, because I think the fans expected this and expected a down year with how that roster changed last year. But you look at Vandenbosch as a first year guy that has come in here. He's in his fifth year in the league, but he's been awesome with 12 and a half sacks. And then you look at the guys out on the edge. I think you look at Ronaldo Hill, the rookie. You look at Adam Jones, the rookie on the other side. These guys have gotten very valuable playing mm -hmm. time out on the corners, which will pay dividends down the line. I'm intrigued today to see how they do against that fast-paced, high-octane offense that Seattle will bring to the table. They've been hard on young cornerbacks all year long. Kickoff coming up next, the Seahawks and the Titans. I like to move the crowd. Move the crowd. Move the crowd. Welcome back to Nashville and happy holidays. Ron Pitts, Tim Ryan. We are set for kickoff. The Seahawks have won the toss. This is the first time here at the Coliseum for the Seattle Seahawks. And look at that. Look at that record when teams come in here for the first time. Jeff Fisher's Titans are very, very tough. Fisher in his 10th year as Titans head coach. They won't go to the playoffs this year, but they are trying to build on a lot of youth on the field. Mike Holmgren, 4-2 and two on the road this year. They've had problems coming east. You know that, and mm -hmm. I know that. And as Mike told us yesterday, Ronnie, they got a heck of a lot to play for today. First obstacle, win the division. Second obstacle, try to gather, at least get that by, and then worry about the home field later on. And a look at the weather. Very good temperatures here. Perfect, Perfect football weather, as they say. And Seattle, as we said earlier, if they get the win, they will ensure themselves a first-round bye in the playoffs. If they get the win and Chicago loses later on tonight against Atlanta, they will lock up home field for the entire playoff series, and that is huge as Mike Holmgren looks for that very first playoff win as Seattle's head coach. Oh, they've had great success up there. and you, I mean, you go back to the last three years, and when they're playing at home more times than not, they're winning those football games. Mm -hmm. They really appreciate that 12th man. And the crowd that's watching this game back home today, Mike Holmgren says thanks a lot because they will pay dividends if this team can get home field throughout. Look for some trickeration from this Titans team. Jeff Fisher has alluded to it. Scobie will take it at the two. Looking for the corner. He's got a little bit of a seam and he's out close to the 30 yard line. Matt Hasselbeck, very good on the road. You see his numbers. A 103 quarterback rating in the last four games. And Tim Ryan, he threw four touchdown passes against San Francisco last week. Just lit him up. Uh, he's just running the system to perfection right now. And you know, people don't realize he's a seven-year pro. And he's drawing from all that experience. You'll see a lot more audibles out of him throughout the football game. And he's just running this system. Mike Holman gets the plays in, and he executes and makes it happen. We'll set the offensive line in the back and receivers after this. Pass. First play out inside. Daryl Jackson. And Jackson checking in for the first time in nine games after knee surgery in week five. He picks up 15 and moves the chains right off the bat. And the Titans have the highest percentage of three and out, forced three and outs in the NFL. A very, very quick pace already for the Seahawks. That's something that Mike Holmgren has talked about all week in practice. Going up the field again, and it's incomplete. Intended again for Daryl Jackson. Up front, arguably the best offensive line in the NFL. The two pro bowlers on the left side, Jones and Hutchinson, very solid. As we mentioned, Daryl Jackson checking back into the starting lineup after missing the last nine games. Joe Jarevicius will sit out. Sean Alexander on pace to break the NFL touchdown record. He is number two in the league in rushing now after that 200-plus performance by Rondé Barber, excuse me, Tiki Barber, last night in the Giants game. And that's Alexander. Alexander with a breakout already. Sean Alexander, he's into Titans territory. And Sean Alexander has just eclipsed the 1,500-yard mark for the second season in a row. Well, just a great job of Sean using his fullback, Max Strong. We've seen it all year long. You're going to see Max Strong come from the fullback here. Tank Williams is going to come over here and get chopped down right at the point of attack. Pow! 
right there. That's going to open this for Sean Alexander, who takes it down for another big first down for Seattle early in this ball game. A 4.9 yards per carry rush coming into this game. Definitely having the big year. Alexander again. Not much. Keith Bullock, the pro bowler, in on the tackle. A pickup of three. And a look at Alexander's numbers there. And the thing that's most impressive, I think, Tim, along with that, is that he seems to get stronger in the second half and as the game goes on. Well, I think part of that is what we talked about in the open with that offensive line. I think they start to wear people down because this is an athletic group. Not only are they big up front, but they're athletic. They get stronger as well as the game goes on. Alexander out of the backfield, second and eight. Hasselbeck trying to get Alexander back. The play clock running low. They'll go from the eye, the power. Nothing happening. Starks, the defensive tackle, in on the tackle. Up front for the Titans, Kyle Vandenbosch. Keep your eye on him. 12 and a half sacks. That's tied for number two in the NFL. Coming here from Arizona and free agency in the offseason. Keith Bullock. The perennial leader, ta leading tackler, has led the team in tackles the last three years. He's got 120 coming into today. Two rookies on the corners. They could get tested. Ronaldo Hill and Pac-Man Jones, as we talked about in the open. A quick shot outside to Maurice Morris, the backup running back. And he's pushed out of bounds. I believe he got the first down easily. He does. A pickup of 14. Bullet on the force out. Well, Bullock's, Bullock's got Maurice Morris in man coverage here, but... What happens to him is he's here. He's going to step up into the line of scrimmage. Morris is going to get outside and create that leverage off a of Bullock. Bullock can't get there. You see there? Bad angle there he took into the backfield. Maurice Morris made him pay for it. Alexander from the eye. Not a lot on the right side. Seattle coming in with the number two offense in the NFL, averaging 375 yards a game. When they've scored 83 points in the last two weeks, part of that was their defense against Philadelphia. But talking to Mike Holmgren and talking to him yesterday, and we did their game last week, Ronnie against San Francisco, he doesn't want to play sloppy today. And they put up 40-plus points, but really felt they left points on the board. The more they get closer to this stretch run into the postseason, he wants this offense to be more crisp, more precise. Second down and nine. Looking for Stevens, he's got him. Jeremy Stevens, touchdown Seattle. No flags down. 22 yards, Hasselback to Jeremy Stevens, and that's his fourth touchdown of the year for Stevens. And that's a mismatch. They caught him in man coverage, and you're going to have Peter Sermon right here manned up on Jeremy Stevens. Now, coaching point, here's the problem. Free release, no jam, and then you're going to see Stevens get out in the open field. Now, he's just going to run away from Sermon. Once Sermon did not slow him down with a jam, Ronnie, off the line of scrimmage, he created that gap of separation. He's all a 6'7", made it easy for Hasselbeck to find him in the middle of the field. We say it over and over as Josh Brown adds on another one. People don't jam the tight ends off the line of scrimmage in the north, and they pay for it. 7-0 Seahawks. Fox NFL Sunday is sponsored by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 40. Well, Mike Holmgren said he wanted to increase the tempo coming into the postseason, and he did it. Eight plays, 70 yards, three minutes, 25 seconds, capped off by the 22-yard touchdown there to Jeremy Stevens. And the Titans have allowed the most passing touchdowns in the NFL. It was 26 coming in. Make that 27 now. A lot of big plays, and that just goes to show you the youth on the back end. And it's going to be hard for these guys all day. You talked about the speed and the tempo. Pac-Man Jones, Ronaldo Hill trying to match that tempo out on the island is going to be difficult. Brown with a short kickoff. That's Jones at the 10. Jones looking for the edge. It gets out to about the 25, 26 yard line. Let's go back to that touchdown. Ronnie, I talked about the inability to jam and not jamming if you're Sermon. Well, here's the coaching point on this. He's got an inside shade on Jeremy Stevens. To me, that tells me he wants Stevens to filter to the outside. What Jeremy Stevens does is he comes off the football, a little club and a swim to take that inside away from Peter Sermon, and then it's just a good throw and catch from Hasselbeck found his guy. Matt will want to open up the middle of the field. The more he does that, the more things out on the perimeter will be at his disposal. 11-year veteran Steve McNair will hand it off. 
And that's Brown, who hasn't had a 100 rushing yard game since December 5th of last year. Steve McNair, very good at home. He's got a 90 quarterback rating in the last four games. But he's got a lot of young guys out on the field. Doesn't have a lot of playmakers around him. I think he's playing pretty good. I mean, first-year offense for Norm Chow. Mm -hmm. And you look at him over the last four or five weeks, right, and his numbers are decent. Second down and eight. Real, real. Troop settling as a tight end over there in short motion. They'll throw pressure. It's complete. Tyrone Calico. And Calico, I believe, will have the first down. Yes, he does. And the rest of the offense up front, Hopkins along with Roos, the tackles, Pillar, Olsen at the guard, and Hartwig at the center position. Roos, the rookie out of Eastern Washington. And as we said, Chris Brown looking for that 100-yard rushing game. Rushing offense has not been very active. Ranked 20th in the NFL, averaging about 3.9 yards a crack. And that's surprising, enough. I think, when you look at that offensive line. Brown again for a couple. And a very active Seahawks defense. Fisher and Wistrom, the speed ends on the outside, and they get a good push inside with Darby and Tubbs. The two linebackers, Tatupu and Hill, Hill, very active, but Tatupu is just having a Pro Bowl type of year. Leads the team in tackles with 94. Babineau will get his second NFL start in place of the injured Andre Dyson, who came to Seattle last year or this year from the Tennessee Titans. He is still battling an ankle injury. Second down and seven. Inside run again. And they're trying the inside. Wistrom along with Hill on the tackle. That's Brown. And you're going to see him continue to try to pound the football. I think if you're the Tennessee Titans and you know their history, they want to be physical. They want to mash people at the line of scrimmage. And they'll have an opportunity to do that against the Seattle team that is undersized up front. They're quick, but they're undersized. So... Look for Jeff to continue to try to identify that mentality and really identify what the identity of this football team is because week 15, I don't, not a lot of people know on this Tennessee team. You better know by week 15, third and three. A quick one, and it's incomplete. Intended for Drew Bennett, and they can't make it work, and that'll bring on the punting unit. Well, that's not good. If you want to control the tempo as an offense and, and keep Matt Hasselbeck over on the sideline, you can't come out and be out here for two minutes and then over to the sideline. The They're going to have to move the chains today, try to chew up that clock and speed this game up to keep Hasselbeck, Ronnie, and all those weapons over there on the bench. The Seahawks have still not allowed an opening drive touchdown this season. Hentrick, bad punt. Williams will take it anyway. He's able to make a couple yards out of it before he gets beat up around the 20-yard line. 7 nothing at 8.54 here in the first quarter. Seven nothing Seattle. They'll take over at the 21 yard line. Jeff Fisher said his defense has to disrupt the tempo of this offense and you saw the great tempo in the first series. They went right down the field 70 yards and put it in the end zone. The bootleg, the short throw, complete. Looks like Stevens, and Stevens will be about four yards short of a first down. We talked about the Pro Bowl offensive line, and it's anchored by that left side. Steve Hutchinson, the fifth-year man out of Michigan, in a contract yeah. here, Tim. And hard to believe that the Seahawks wouldn't get him wrapped I don't up. Think, yeah, I don't think they'll let him get away. Now, we'll be able to test the market. Guys are going to be throwing a lot of money at him. But let's Ooh. remember, they've got the franchise tag that they can use because... They can't use it on Sean Alexander another year. Hutch may be the guy that gets it here for the 05 offseason. Second and four, and Alexander will pick his way through for an easy first down. Let's check in with James Brown for the first time today for this game break. JB. All right, Ron, Carolina looking to move a full game up on Tampa Bay and the NFC South. Capped the opening drive with that end around to Steve Smith. His first career rushing touchdown, 20 yards to pay dirt. The Panthers on top, 7-0. Let's take it back to Ron Pitts and Tim Ryan. And JB, he didn't change the baby this time. Another great play by Steve Smith, making his bid for an MVP. And this guy here is making a bid for an MVP. Sean Alexander with a huge run. So the 20, 15 out of bounds at the 12 yard line of the Tennessee Titans. 
and he came into today's game just short of the rushing title thanks to Tiki Barber, but that might help get it back. Anytime you see a running back cutting back, look at the backside defensive tackle. Does Hainsworth get too far up the field to open this crease up for Sean Alexander? That's actually a pretty good job squeezing right there, but there it is. A couple of missed tackles, a bad angle by your safety and Tank Williams. And Sean just glides now. When he gets in the open field, his vision is terrific. He can cut back against the grain running. He's faster, too, than I think anybody gives him credit for. Mm -hmm. 52 yards, and Alexander was 79 yards on six carries already. Going across the field to Ingram, and Ingram is brought down at about the six-yard line by Castle. You know, it's interesting when you talk about Sean Alexander and talking to him last night, and, and boy, is he getting a lot of hype now on the front of SI and all that good stuff, and we'll talk about that later. But you look at his numbers and where he is and what he's doing, and you know, it's really funny in talking to him last night. He said he's breathing. A couple of years ago, he said one of his sprint coaches started talking to him and said, you're not breathing when you run. I hold and my he breath, he, he said. He holds his breath, and he didn't even realize it. And Alexander not holding his breath here as he continues to push the pile. They'll probably mark forward progress, but he got very close to the goal line as they scuffle it out here. A little frustration showing up on the part of the Titans, and I can understand why. Getting well, gashed. And gashed right over the money side, this left side of the offensive line. And this is a perfect example of Sean coming up with a 50-plus yard run and now have enough gas left in the tank to expose that hole like that. You and see a part of it through the hole? That is part of it because he's breathing now on the long runs. He said he's much more energized at the end of games and on the following play. He doesn't have to come off the football field. Didn't even know he wasn't breathing on those long runs. And very grateful for his guy for picking that up. First and goal, Alexander, and he'll just walk in. Touchdown, Seahawks. 24th of the year for Sean Alexander. And they are making it look ridiculously easy here in the first couple of good blocks. Ryan Hannum is an underrated blocker here at tight end. He's going to get a good seal. Then you're going to see the linebacker step up. You're going to see the puller come around in the running back and get a spot on him there. You see the good block by Max Strong once again. Yeah. You get a good kick out. You get a good block down from Hannum. Then a nice block by Strong and Alexander makes it look easy. Whenever there's a great run by Alexander, it's usually accompanied by a great block by Max Strong. 14 zip here in the first. We talked about that career year that Sean Alexander is having. 24 touchdowns. He's on pace to break Priest Holmes' NFL record of 27 set back in 2003. Chalk up also nine straight 100-yard games versus divisional opponents. That is an NFL record. He set that last week against the San Francisco 49ers. Jones at the five. Avoids one, avoids another one. Pac-Man Jones, he took back a punt last week for 52 yards, but then gets waxed appropriately by Etra Pruitt. And that will bring on the offense. An offense that's got to get something going here quick. Ronnie, here's the touchdown. I'll tell you why this O-line's so good. It's the unison. Block down there, block down there. Watch Hutchinson get out and get the kick out, and then you'll see Max Strong fit up inside. Everybody is in sync, acting as one group. Look at that. I mean, on a man, on a man, on a man, crease, touchdown. To take a quote from Bill Parcells, earlier in the week he said, the most overrated thing in this business, as we look at the touchdown record there, the most overrated thing in the business is a game plan, and the most underrated thing is execution. And you saw a perfect example of it right there. Brown chugs up inside, but we've got a marker down. Holding, 69 offense, 10 yards, repeat first down. Gerald Austin gives us the call. That's Zach Pillar, the left guard. And the first two drives, in case you just joined in, well, you missed two touchdowns. One of 70, one of 79. The first drive capped off by a 22-yard strike. Hassle back to Jeremy Stevens. Then Sean Alexander got going. He had a long run in there in the middle of that second drive, 52 yards. He pounded it through from about two yards out. First and 20 after the penalty. Two tight ends set for Tennessee. 
Looked as though a mix-up in the backfield. A high throw, and it's incomplete intended for Drew Bennett. It looked as though McNair wanted to play action to somebody, and that somebody wasn't there. And he had Drew Bennett on the stop route. You're going to see Drew get out into the secondary. Steve just lets this go. It sails on him. I think more times than not, when you see a football sail, it just comes out of the hand a little bit too soon. Just a little too much elevation as the 6'5 Bennett couldn't go up and get it. McNair battling injuries once again. The shin, the back, the ankle has been on and off in practice, but he is a warrior. On game day, he shows up, second and 20. Looking for the middle screen. There it is to Scaife. The rookie tied in, and he's out to about the 22-yard line, well short still of the first down. Hill yep. along with Terrell on the tackle. One thing as you watch this offense that could be a feather in their cap today is that Steve McNair did get a good week of practice in in terms of Thursday and Friday. And I know over the last couple of weeks after that injury at, against Indianapolis with the leg and the ankle that not getting a lot of practice reps. And when you got a bunch of new receivers, you got guys that have been hurt all year long. When you talk about the kids, talk about Drew Bennett also being out over some games with the thumb. I mean, it's been a work in progress. And the lack of timing in practice and the lack of reps in practice, Ronnie, has showed up on the field on Sundays all year long. Third down and 14. Seattle bluffs blitz. They go to zone. They're in a three-man deep look. Another bad throw, and that will bring on the punting unit. And the Boo Birds come out here in Nashville. Tim, we talked about in the offseason the big salary cap purge for this Tennessee Titan team. They lost guys like Derek Mason, Andre Dyson, Samari Roll, Fred Miller. Kevin Im Carter. Impact guys in the past. When you look at their team now, they've got a lot of young players, and young players will make mistakes, especially at the wide receiver core. Jimmy Williams will fair catch it at the 30-yard line. 14-0 with 4-15 here in the first quarter. Stay tuned for game two of our Fox NFL doubleheader. It's an NFC East battle as the Dallas Cowboys lock up with the Washington Redskins. Fox Sports America's most watched NFL network. Boy, the Redskins are bumming that the Giants didn't beat Can or that, that didn't lose to Kansas City last night because if you're Washington and the Giants slipped up, they controlled their own destiny. Now they're going to need some help. Huge, huge game with Dallas coming to town, especially if you remember that Monday night mm -hmm. matchup earlier in the year. First down and 10 for the Seahawks. They'll go with three wide outs. Hand it off inside to Morris for a couple. And yesterday, some big plays, some big players making big plays. Tom Brady, you see his numbers there, but how about Tiki Barber? Had him on the pregame show there. 220 yards set a franchise record. He wasn't supposed to do that. His offensive tackles were out of that football game. <laughs> well, Sean Alexander said he wasn't supposed to do that because Sean was leading the NFL in rushing before that game. Tiki rolled him up, and Rod Smith had a big game for Denver. I'll tell you, I'm most surprised with what the New England Patriots are doing right now. Watch out for Tom Brady and that team coming out of the Absolutely. And Sean Alexander getting a rest. He's off the field, and that one is complete to Bobby, Alli to, uh, Bobby Ingram for first down. Let's go to Los Angeles for this update. Hey, Ron, you know Todd Bauman making only his fourth ever start. Take a look here, hooking up with Dante Stallworth, a 23-yard strike. That evens the score at 7-all against Carolina. Back to Ron Pitts and Tim Ryan. All right, JB, and Matt Hasselbeck has just gone over the 3,000-yard passing mark now for the fourth consecutive season setting a new Seahawks franchise record. Congratulations, Matt. And another perfect throw to Ingram. And Ingram will be across the 50 and move the chains again. And there's a quick look at the AFC playoff picture. Of course, the Indianapolis Colts fighting for that perfect season. And the Denver Broncos, they lock up their division last night with that win against the Buffalo Bills. But like you say, Tim, watch out for the guys at the bottom there, 9-5 in New England, because they are healthy and on the move. Yep. Here's the NFC playoff picture. As we've said, a win today for Seattle, and they will get themselves the first round by. A win plus a Chicago loss will mean home field throughout. And Alexander is popped quickly by Brad Castle, the middle linebacker. Really, you think about it in the AFC, that, there's going to be a big battle for that number two seed. Who's going to get the bye when you're talking about those two top teams with Denver and, and with Cincinnati 
uh, looking for that number two, of course, behind Indy with the looks like going to be is going to be a one seed. And then in the NFC, really, there's a battle at two through six. When you look at all those seeds, very complicated right now when you look at it with a lot of football to be played. Who's going to garner that two through six seed? I think we know who the one seed's going to be. I think they're sitting right there on the field in the Seattle Seahawks. Alexander. You know, it's funny what Sean Alexander said about the whole Sports Illustrated cover this week. And everybody's talking about the jinx. He says, well, wait a minute. Jerry Rice was on that cover. Emmitt Smith was on that cover. Brett Favre was on that cover. Now, if that's a jinx, then I want that Super Bowl ring jinx. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a more humble guy than Sean Alexander. Terrific human being. And, Tim, you've been talking about this guy now for three years. And to say that, well, where did he come from and who is he and how come nobody knows, I don't know if, that, if that's accurate. I can tell you where he came from, about 300 miles from here, and he was a touchdown machine in Alabama, and he hasn't stopped since he got in the NFL. Hasselbeck looking for an ad-lib here. Plenty of time to throw in a completion to Jeremy Stevens. And if that doesn't sum up the maturation of Matt Hasselbeck through the years, I don't know what does. 19 yards and a first. Watch him keep his eyes down the field. Okay, he's out of the pocket right now. He can throw this ball anywhere and not get an intentional grounding, but he's going to keep working. His tight end flashes free, and he hits Jeremy Stevens. That's just, to me, that's relaxed quarterback play because Sean has had so much, or Matt, excuse me, has had so much success in this league. He's trying to make a play no matter what. Keeps his eyes down the field, and his receivers, in particular, his tight end that time, kept working for him in the scramble. Look at those numbers, nearly perfect. The pump and go, and they got him just overthrown. Intended for Daryl Jackson. It's incomplete. He's got Ronaldo Hill in man coverage. You see a nice big cushion here, but Daryl Jackson has got the element of speed, so you've got to respect it. Now he's going to do a stop and go there and gets going. Hill can't catch back up, but Matt overthrows him into the end zone. Matt waits a little bit on that, Ronnie, and drops it where it needs to be. That's an easy touchdown. This is a guy now that has missed nine games in Daryl Jackson. And think about it now. He's been the number one receiver here for the last four years. This guy's a good player. Doesn't seem to have messed up any of the chemistry so far in this game. The pitch and the cut for Alexander. You know one thing interesting about Sean is that when he realizes there's nothing there, he will shut smart. it down. He He's doesn't smart player. pour in there and try to go head-to-head -head with a brick wall. He lives for another day. And that will be the end of the first quarter, and it is all Seahawks. And this is what we call ball control. Check it out. And look what happens. You give that high-octane high offense that many more opportunities in the first quarter of a football game. Hard to win like that. Not controlling the tempo like they wanted to at the beginning of this game, the Tennessee Titans. All about big plays. Wow, a jump through That's and a sides. tackle. That's but he might have gone early. That's Albert Hainsworth. Offside, 92 defense, five yards. It's still third down. Just a bit offside. That should become a five-yard turn into a 15, if you ask me. Because if, yeah. here's how, here is Hainsworth right here. He's clearly off the ball before it snaps. He's gone. And now he's going to swell up and put 340 on Hasselbeck. To me, that becomes right. a simple five-yard penalty yeah. and turns right into a 15-yard personal foul with all that weight crunching down on the quarterback. And Mike Holmgren can't like that now. Like you said, 340 on your franchises or one of your franchises' shoulder. And with the kind of year he's having, that would be disastrous for this team. Third and five. Alexander, quick inside draw. They're going to be about four yards short. And that will bring on a field goal attempt by Josh Brown. I'll tell you what they're going to set him up for, and we're going to see it later in the game, is that naked bootleg around the, around the outside. Because Travis LeBoy, out here at defensive end, watch him fly down the line of scrimmage to get in on the tackle. You see that? I guarantee you that Gil Haskell, the offensive coordinator, and some of the other guys on this staff are sitting upstairs going, all right, we got that DN biting. Let's bring that naked bootleg around that corner on the next drive. 36 yards for Brown. He hit from 52 yards out twice and it's blocked and that's a live ball it's picked up Lamont Thompson picks it up I think it was free safety. on the block so a much needed big play by the Tennessee Titan defense 
here as we start the second quarter. Ronnie, it was Antoine Odom with the block. Here he is right here, and he's going to blow this gap up. The problem is, is watch Locklear. He just opens the hinge. He opens the door, doesn't step down, and is not strong from the inside out. Oh. Opens up that gate. That is a breakdown oh. in field goal blocking. Odom exploits it and comes up with a nice block field goal. He's had some big plays this year. Well, next Saturday, Christmas Eve, it's an NFL on Fox special. It all begins at 12 p.m. Eastern and 9 a.m. Pacific with America's number one pregame show. And the Cowboys taking on the Panthers. Some of you will see the Giants and the Redskins or the Lions and the Saints. Don't forget the Falcons and Bucks in there also. A lot of action on Christmas Eve. First three possessions. That's a bonus. If you're a Tennessee tight. Remember the Titans, they blocked one last week against the Houston Texans. That was Hank. And they'll run it inside. Hank, the Tank Williams, came in with the block. And I think they got to just keep pounding it. We talked about trying to claim that identity up front and be physical, but I think more than that is just to, to let that clock just keep ticking. I think it's already obvious that the defense is going to have issues all day trying to stop Hasselbeck and Alexander and the boys over there on offense. So you help your defense out by moving the chains, getting first downs, and chewing up the clock. So far in this game, the Titans have been up against it. Seven yards on that last run. Brown, and that's a first down and a oh. nasty stiff arm. Oh, oh, oh. As he rolls across the 30-yard line. He picked up nine. This is how they want to mash up front. Just pull that backside guard and get people down on the ground. Good block there by Fleming. And then the straight arm there by Chris Brown on Marquand Manuel. <laughs> That was nasty. <laughs> Those are the type that they will laugh about in the meetings on Monday. And you look the first nine games versus the last four games this season for Brown. He's kind of disappeared. Now his numbers have gone down, but you got to, I think, take into consideration that Travis Henry has taken a lot of those numbers and a lot of those carries. He's not out there today uh, with the ankle injury. But I'll tell you this, Chris Brown has become a much more effective receiver out of the backfield over the last three or four games. Chuck Darby checks out. Rocky Bernard checks in. First and ten. Quick hitter outside to Bennett. And Bennett's got a little room. Loops a little bit. Pushed out of bounds before he could get to the 35-yard line. Michael Bullware, the strong safety coming up. Everybody wants to know around here with Steve McNair is, is this his last year in Tennessee? You can see how the big pad on his left shin and ankle there. He has been beat up, but I think it's up to McNair. I mean, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. He's got that $50 million option bonus due in the offseason, which in effect was to force him back to the negotiating table, which he will go to. Jeff Fisher says the contract, the number, that won't be a problem. Really, it's whether or not Steve McNair wants to come back and continue to play football or hang up the spikes. That's up to number nine. Two tight ends on the field, second and seven. No place to go but backwards for Brown. A loss of five yards. Ronnie, this is the biggest and the best upgrade on this defense is what they've done on the interior with the defensive tackles and the linebacker Lofa Tatupu. Watch Rocky Bernard, who's going to be here, and you're going to have Tubbs here. Watch these guys get the push. This is a zone play where the offensive linemen are all stepping to the right. Watch them all push their guys back, get penetration, establish a new line of scrimmage, and then get a big tackle for loss. That's really good defensive line play, and I'll tell you, not only is Bernard doing it in the running game, he's got eight and a half sacks on the season. That dude is for real. He's playing, playing well. And leads the team, those eight and a half sacks. Not even considered the start of third down and 12. Looking in the middle of the field, and it's caught. Bennett, and Bennett slides down for the easy catch and the easy first down. 15 yards on the pass play. And this is a quarterback and a receiver that have played together for a while and just exploiting a zone. You watch Drew Bennett here. He's just going to go out here and he's going to sit down in this little zone here. Now, Seattle is only rushing three, which means they're dropping eight. So they've got a bunch of guys. Do you see there? Do you see the flat got held there, out yeah. there by Jimmy Williams following his guy out there? Opened up that throwing lane and McNair found Drew Bennett. Fifth year man out of UCLA, the former quarterback at UCLA, bothered by a Broken thumb early on, trying to work through it. Pump and go, collision, nothing there, and the marker's going to go down against Marcus Trufant. And I think he did the right thing. 
Here's Drew Bennett right here. They're going to run the double move with Trufon on him. That's going to be an illegal contact. That ball wasn't in the air yet. Yep. You can see Gerald's sign down there if he gave him pass interference, or in fact, it's just an illegal contact. Illegal contact. You're right on that ball, not in the air yet. But that's a smart move by Trafant because I really believe that if he kept coming, he would have been burnt. He's had a quiet year, Marcus Trufant. He has. One interception, switched from left corner over to right corner, had some shoulder surgery in the offseason. And Tim, that's tricky. You know, having no. played back at that corner position, your technique is a little. A little screwy going from one side to another. High formation to Brown. If you say to him, they'll just try to pound this ball out. And this Seattle defense, you can't say enough about them in the last two games. Eight takeaways. Giving up only three points. Of course, they went to Philadelphia and blanked them. Blew them up. Then last week, gave up only three points to San Francisco. 40-point output by the offense both times. I mean, this is the type of production you what want it, your team yeah. to have coming into what the playoffs. What did Chow tell us the other day? There's no real superstars on this defense, and he's probably right. But I'll tell you this, there's 11 really good football players that play whistle to whistle. That's why they're so good. Reminiscent of the New England Patriots run. And there's a completion. Calico. Calico's been very quiet. He missed three games with a calf injury, has dropped a couple balls, but he gets 11 there. Nice little design, good play call, because you're going to see Chris Brown go here. This is going to pull Marquand Manuel out and open it up right underneath for Calico. You see Marquand go out with him, yep. and then that short route underneath is going to be open for Calico, and then you hope now that he can rack a little bit and just get a run after the catch and pick up some positive yards. Sorry, sorry. Nice those play DBs, call. You can't jump out of those windows. That's what they put guys in the flat for. They want you to jump out so they can fit the ball in. Play action run, looking deep. A stop route inside by Bennett. Nicely executed. 15 yards and a first. What a job by Bennett reading the safety. Because you're going to watch Bennett here. He's going to take off on this inside go route. He's got this guy beat, but he knows there's a safety back there. So he's just going to turn around and come back to the football. Really, really intelligent play by Drew Bennett. Absolutely. And the Titans tried to start. run a little hurry up. 77 offense. Put a little, put a little Peyton Manning on him and it down. backfired. Put a little sugar in that huddle, huh? That was on Hartwig. He wasn't set. Going back to that catch. Now you can see that he's got Babineau beat right now. Bab Babineau's in a trail position, but he saw the safety. Yep. Sitting back deep, knew, knew that he would not be able to get past him in that double coverage. So he stopped, turned around, came back to the football. And here's what they're doing, Ronnie. We talked about it. They're chewing up that clock and helping out their defense. First and 15 after the penalty. Hard count attempt. Brown. Brown's got a little bit of an opening. And one of the things that the Seahawks defensive players talked to us about last night, Tim, was that they felt this offensive line would try to lean on them, mash on them, as we say in NFL terminology. Well, they're good now. I mean, Hartwig and Benji Olsen and Michael Roos, these guys will kick it down now. Once they get you moving one way, and that's what Seattle's going to do, being undersized. They're going to penetrate and, and, and blow up those gaps. You're going to see a lot of position steps by this offensive line today because they'll take that D-line whatever way they want to go and then ride with them. And they're big enough to do that once they get their hands on it. Second down, 11. A quick throw outside. That's complete to Courtney Roby. The third round pick out of Indiana. And he gets a little closer. Classic Norm Chow. I mean, you spread guys out, you get four wide, and then you just throw this little short route. Over here to Courtney Roby. Now he's got great speed, so Babineau's going to give him a cushion. He's just going to put on the brakes and come out and get the football. I think that was Michael Harden out there in coverage. Mm -hmm. Roby, the nephew of the late Reggie Roby, the former punter with the Miami Dolphins. Part of that young crew here. They're trying to get in sync in the passing game. They'll hand it off. Jared Payton, some more NFL lineage. The son of the late great Walter Payton. I'm glad he they're choosing. Inside. Ronnie, I'm glad they're choosing to run the football down here in the red zone. 
I think this year they've gotten away from the running game at times when they've gotten down in the money zone and have put it up and they've ended up settling for a lot of field goals and going forward on a lot of fourth downs. I like the fact that Jeff Fisher has continued just to try to pound it and use his size advantage with his offensive line up front. Seattle number two in the NFL in red zone defense. They've only given up 13 touchdowns and 33 trips. They'll run it again, Peyton, and Peyton will hit Pater. Touchdown, Titans. The first touchdown allowed in 10 quarters by the Seahawks defense. Very good blocking up front. Benji Olsen, watch here, watch Roos. They're going to double here on Terrell and then get back here to Bowler. They get great push on both guys. Watch, now they've got Terrell. Now they're going to roll to the next level. Here's two guys deep into the end zone. Touchdown, Jared Payton. The second touchdown of the year for Jared Payton. Not a lot of time on the field. Came into the game with only 30 carries for under 100 yards. But he comes up big and gets the Tennessee Titans on the board. 12 plays, 84 yards. Capped off by the touchdown run. Jared Payton gives the Titans their first touchdown in the last 10 quarters, <laughs> if you can believe that. Good Make balance. That. Like the way they did it. Through the run and the pass. Physical up front. That's Titan. That's AFC football when you think about it. Yeah. Make that offensive touchdown because they were able to score on the punt return last week thanks to Pac-Man Jones. So Rob Baronis will kick it away. The Titans pull within seven after getting shelled early in the first quarter. Scobie with the short kickoff. Scobie out to about the 31-yard line. Roy Fleming hustling down on the tackle. Jared Payton giving love up for the sky to pop. Fox NFL Sunday is sponsored by Miller. There's good enough and there's better than it has to be. Miller, good call. Adam Pac-Man Jones. Funny last night, Matt Hasselbeck said, yeah, Adam Jones over there. He didn't have the respect yet. You know? <laughs> Couldn't call him by his nickname. No, he, he, didn't, he didn't put Adam. the Pac-Man. He said Adam. It's kind of like Simeon versus Simeon. Until he became the pass rusher and the Super Bowl guy and all that, it was Simeon. Then it would change to Simeon, you know? It's like Plaxico Burris and Plexico Burris. <laughs> First and ten for Hasselbeck. I formation run for Alexander looking for the cutback. Travis LeBoy won't let it happen. We talked about Pac-Man Jones and some other outstanding defensive rookies on the field this year across the NFL. Having a very good year, but to me, I, I mean, 94 tackles, four sacks. He's got three interceptions. He's got one touchdown. Merriman, Odell Thurman. DeMarcus Ware all playing good. To me, there's no rookie playing better on defense than Lofa Tutupu. That's all there is to it. Interceptions in each of the last two games, in addition to leading the team in tackles. Pressure, plenty of time, and it's incomplete. Intended outside for Joe Jerevicious. And, Tim, you just brought the point up. Where is Joe Jerevicious, a guy who's been on fire the last nine weeks? With Daryl Jackson coming back, he's had kind of had to take a back seat. Well, he's going to have to because d -Jack is the number one receiver, Daryl Jackson. Now, Joe Jervicious got eight touchdowns on the year. And this is the area now where he'll be used most often here for the rest of the year on third down when they get into their three wide receiver set. And they'll drop him outside and they'll put Bobby Ingram in the slot. They're actually doing it all the way around. Here's Joe sitting in the slot here. Yeah. Here's Ingram out inside, outside at the Z receiver. Third and six, Ingram in short motion. Pressure, Ingram, he's got it, he'll have the first. And he is the third down man. He's been that way throughout his career. And with that reception, Ingram has just recorded his first 60 catch season since 99. And hard to stay with him. I told you he lines up in the slot, but hard to stay with him because he ended up coming out of the slot. Good protection up front. Matt's got a good lane to throw the football and then able to get Bobby wide open on that crossing route after he came in that short motion. See, I, I told you he lines up in the slot. That time he lined up outside, but with that short motion, ended up just on the inside hip of Joe Jervicious when he took off. 
the end around Jackson looking for a little help and he gets out past the 50 yard line into Tennessee territory a pickup of seven yards Here's the key on this play as you watch this defensive end and what happens to Kyle Vandenbosch. Does he get sucked down the line of scrimmage? Oh, this is the play here to Ingram. Okay, I see you. Yeah. See, he came in motion there. Look at this big jumble pick on the umpire. Nobody can run with Ingram at that point. That's a classic play in this West Coast offense. Using that umpire really as an obstacle that you've got to either go under or go over the top as a receiver. Hard for the defender to stay with him. Second down and three. They're stringing this one out on Alexander. And Pac-Man Jones comes up with a nice open field tackle. Remember, this is a guy, a two-year starter at West Virginia. He had 200 tackles in that two-year span. Now, he does a really good job of forcing things. Now, he's the force guy. He's got to turn it back inside. So he's playing Sean Alexander from the outside in there. Sean's not going to shake and bake on Pac-Man Jones. He's got a lot of ability, Ronnie, in short spaces. He's a heck of a force guy now. As you said, a bunch of tackles in college. He'll come up and give you what they used to call it when we were playing that core of support, core of support off the corner, helping your guys out on the inside. A loss of two on the play. Ball start. But this play is stopped. 62 offense. Five yards. Still third down. That'll be Chris Gray. They call 62 the right guard. And this is where Mike Holmgren is going to start to get irritated with compounded mistakes. Now, a mistake here, a mistake there, that's all right. But you go back to last week before the half, you get a holding call, you get a sack. Now, all of a sudden, He's got two and three mistakes compounding on top of each other. That's what he talked about with playing sloppy. He wants to try to avoid that here in this ball game. Third down and ten after the penalty. Hasselbeck will run for it. And he'll come up five yards short at least. Waddell in on the tackle along with Sermon. And that will bring on the punting unit. I think what happened here was this slot receiver right here slips and falls down. So he's one less guy in the route. You see, Ingram, oh, that's, just a good, that's how you jam a guy. Ate that's how up. you jam a guy. That's a heck of a job Man. out there by Waddle on Ingram to get him down to the ground, which then did not give Hasselbeck the opportunity to find him, and Matt had to take off, and they forced him to punt the ball. Nice defensive never, series by the Titans. Never underestimate the power of the jam in bump and run. Ruin with a nice high punt and a fair catch called at the 15-yard line by Pac-Man Jones. The Titans starting to surge a little bit. On January 8th, the NFL's second season begins as the NFC's best teams go head-to-head -to, -head to see which team will advance to the championship game. Coverage of the NFC playoffs begins with the wild card January 8th only on Fox Sports, America's most watched NFL network. Two-minute drive situation now here for the Titans. They are down by seven. This is a big drive for them, Pitsy. Continue to try to keep that momentum now going into the half. They'll go with Brown, and he bangs it inside close to the 20-yard line. And Brown has been bothered by a, an injured elbow. And last year, he led the league with a 4.9-yard per carry average. So you talk about him getting back to that grinding, and you look at him, and you look at those numbers, and you think, hey, this is the guy that can do it. He's done it before. That's the two-minute warning. Don't forget the Visa Halftime Report is coming your way. JB, Terry, Howie, and Jimmy will have all the scores and highlights, plus the Fox Sports ticker giving you all the up-to-the-second information. That's the Visa Halftime Report coming your way in about two minutes. And don't forget to check your... Fox Sports ticker up in the upper right-hand corner of our screen. Some big scores going on around the NFL. Indy's down right now to San Diego, 10-0 mm -hmm. in their own backyard. In their own backyard. At eight minutes to go in the first half there. Ronnie, you've seen there from that last drive, the Titans started to get it right. Time of possession starting to equal out. They're getting shots at it with more plays now. And again, most importantly, getting Hasselbeck and those guys are keeping them over there on the sideline. Ball tip coming out but caught anyway by Tyrone Calico. A full set of TOs for everybody. Plenty of time to run their whole offense here. They can use the middle of the field. They got the three timeouts. This is where your seasoned, experienced quarterback comes through. Let's go. This will be a third down and one. Hand it off inside to Peyton. 
and Payton will pick up the first down. And play is stopped. A timeout is called by the Titans. 14-7, winding down here in the first half. We're back, 119 left here in the first half. And quick look at the Tennessee offensive leaders. Chris Brown not in the game right now. I don't know if this is part of a two-minute deal or he's injured. But he's only was limping a little bit. He plays earlier. There's a throw through the hands of Jared Payton. Tupu on the coverage. That's the old I heard footsteps and didn't want to go up and grab it because that should have been an easy catch for Jarrett Payton. McNair's going to put this right where it needs to be. Yeah, it's got a little elevation on it, but one that should have been caught. See what happened. Jared Payton turned and tried to run. Took his turned eyes his off eye, yeah, took his eyes off the football, expecting a big hit from Lofa to Tupu. you got to gather and you got to capture that ball first before you decide to do anything else. Bennett and Calico at the bottom. Second and ten. Inside to the tight end, Troop, and Troop will move the chains. He's out close to the 44-yard line, 16 yards as they continue to hurry up. This offense is doing an outstanding job of protecting Steve McNair right now in this game. Let's, this group right here has gotten 45 sacks on the year, number one in the NFL. The Titans group keeping him out. Oh. Nearly intercepted. Wistrom looked as though he had a little zone drop going as a marker comes down late. Could be a roughing the passer. And that'll be 15 First big ones. Foul, roughing the quarterback. Number 94 defense. 15 yards. Automatic first down. There it is. Here's Wistrom here, Ron. And he's just going to drop right into this little zone here and play the passing lane. And he gets his hands on it. See, he's got the back and man coverage. Now he comes off in that passing lane, almost gets it. And then you saw the rough behind him by Bryce Fisher. And that's what I'm talking about. A defensive line that hasn't gotten to the quarterback. They're used to getting to the quarterback. Maybe starting to get a little frustrated taking shots that they shouldn't take. That moves the ball up to the Seattle 42-yard line. McNair on the run. He'll go for it. And he'll get out of bounds right at the marker. You can say what you want to say. Sternum, shin, knee, ankle. He's still got some mobility in the pocket. And Zach Piller right here is going to get away with a hold on Craig Terrell because Terrell spins back underneath. and He's got a free run to the quarterback. Piller's going to grab him right there and hold him. He gets away with it. And now it's McNair just taking off. We saw this last week. Had a big scramble at the end of that game to keep it going. Now his mobility may not be what it used to be, but he's still got enough to make big plays, impactful plays when he has to. Fourth most rushing yards in the NFL by a quarterback. There's another throw after his 11-yard gain. That one inside to Ben Troop again. Troop coming up big on this drive. 14 on that one, 30 this, seconds and counting. This no huddle and this, this passing game right now has got these guys tired up front. Mm -hmm. They're getting no pressure and McNair's dropping back and finding guys open, sitting in the middle of the zones. Let's go back to that last play. Watch, here's Ben Troop right here. The key here now is no pass rush. He's just going to sit back and see how he just turns around. I mean, that's that's pitch and catch. That's too easy. And Ben Troop finds a little soft spot in that zone. Flips around. McNair has had a great relationship with these tight ends all season long. Heck, Aaron Kenny's his number one receiver as a tight end. He's not even in the football game today. All three of them over 30 catches. Checks it down inside to Peyton. Peyton breaks one tackle and squirms his way to about the eight-yard line. Timeout called by the Tennessee Titans. They'll have one left, and they are threatening the score here going in at halftime. Ronnie, this is classic Norm Chow offense. Watch these two guys get deep. They're going to clear out the defenders, and then Peyton's just going to leak out and catch one right in front of the medium zone. See that? The other two guys are going to pull the defenders. Mm, yeah. Now he leaks out, breaks one tackle there, and it's about nine yards on the play. Third down and one. Brown out of the backfield. Empty set. It better come out fairly quick. Pressure. Throw inside. It's caught by Bennett. What a grab. But a quick tackle. And time is running down. They'll have to burn it, and they do. So with nine seconds left, 
They burn their final timeout. Mike Holmgren had to stop practice because he didn't feel the focus was right this week. And he's not liking oh, what's going irritated. on here. He's irritated watching his defense just get worse on the field right now. This is a different team now that showed up here in the first quarter. No touchdowns in the first 10 quarters. The last 10 quarters and Tennessee's threatening to score here. Is it in? Touchdown! Drew Bennett. And he pulls the Titans within one. He's got man coverage. Here's Bennett right here. Here's Babino who ends up taking a man. He's just going to get two yards into the end zone behind the linebackers. And it's just a very, very good read and throw from McNair. You see, he got right behind the umpire, two yards into the end zone. McNair was locked on him the whole time, threw him a strike for the touchdown. And remember this drive, that was a long one. Baronis puts it through and he ties things up. An 84-yard drive, and they tie it up here. Here's the touchdown. Here's Bennett. Watch again now. He's a free runner. Nobody touches him. He's just going to get into the end zone scot-free. Babineau's going to end up trailing him. He's right here, but this is easy money from Steve McNair to Drew Bennett. Nobody touched him. Free run right behind the umpire. Touchdown. Tim, you talk about a defensive meltdown for Tennessee. Two touchdowns in the last six minutes off the heels of two consecutive 84-yard drives. That's what you call controlling the tempo. So we talked about in the open. Grind it out. You know, some good stuff running the ball, too, in that, in that drive. That's the thing now. And you know what changed the tempo? The blocked field goal. Seattle That's about to point. add 17 point. points on to nothing. And they block the field. Well, there's a little poocher. And not much doing. And that'll be the end of the half as they get it going out there. No, they the got Titans. two seconds. They got two seconds left now. That's right. They're going to throw a Hail Mary. Why not? Boy, if you get bit on this one, you, it would have to go See, back to Jeff Fisher. For well, that he little squib well, he wanted to squib it. Right. And Baronis didn't squib it properly. Mm -hmm. One of the upbacks was able to grab it. I mean, time, you would think, would have ran out. And now we'll see if Hasselbeck and company no. just take a knee and no, take it in. Take the All knee. right, there you go. That is the end of the first half. We are tied at 14. Stay tuned for the Visa Halftime Report. Coming up after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Jeff Fisher trying to get the troops going. I think he's already got them going. We're tied here. <laughs> At halftime, 14-14, welcome to the broadcast booth, Ron Pitts, Tim Ryan, and you talk about the Seattle Seahawks, well, it all started out great, and it all started out great thanks to one man, that's Sean Alexander coming out, 14 carries, 95 yards, and a touchdown, he really got on track early. Well, he did, and it looked like it was going to be an ugly game earlier, and a, and a landslide win for Seattle, but uh, it hasn't been the case in the second quarter, you're right though, Sean at the beginning of the game was terrific, his offensive line doing good stuff for him, you just see a good illustration of his vision and how he can get to those cutback lanes and then he gets in the open field he's going to make it happen nobody sniffs the end zone better than he does that being his 24th touchdown on the year mm -hmm. but that second quarter you started to get the feeling that Seattle may be stepping into a trap here in Tennessee yeah, just say it trap game especially <laughs> with Steve McNair and he comes into the game right now beat up but he's going down the field two nice drives 84 yards consecutive back to back there Puts his team down the field and they get points. 12 of 17 for 121 and one touchdown. No, he was brilliant in that two-minute drive especially. And I think you got to give some credit, too, to that offensive line in front of him. Give him adequate time. And he just razored up that Seattle secondary there on that two-minute drive. A two-minute drill there at the end of the half like a surgeon. I mean, he was very, very good. He knows where to go with the football. And heck, he's enjoyed a very good second quarter. And that's how you do it. I mean, if you move the sticks and you control tempo... You're going to even things out in terms of time of possession. And you see that thing is starting to come even with what they were able to do, that being the Titans in the second quarter of the game. And there's a look at the fantasy players. Of course, Alexander, we've already talked about him, and Hasselbeck is just right on as usual. 
And of course, McNair getting it done, not only in the air, but like we said, being able to do it on the ground with his legs. For the latest in fantasy stats, log on to foxsports.com on MSN. We're underway here in the second half. This will be Jones at about the 12. Jones reverses field, heads back inside and runs into a headache at about the 18-yard line. Earlier, third member of our crew, Maria Black, caught up with Seattle head coach Mike Holmgren. Coach, you can't be happy about the way the first half ended. No, you know, it was uh, uh, two different halves in one half. We had the first quarter and they had the second quarter. We have to be more consistent than that and play a little bit better defense and take advantage of plays on offense when we got them. Great. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right, the tale of two quarters, and as you said, Tim, avoiding that lull that they've had not only in practice, but in the last game against the San Francisco 49ers. This defense has got to get right back out here and reset this tempo. Quick throw outside to Bennett, and Bennett will be about a yard shy of the first down, brought down by Marquand Manuel. And the Seahawks defense, look at, that. Look at this. The previous 157 minutes, no touchdowns, but in the last six minutes going to halftime break they gave up two and that's the worry i think for seahawk fans and even for this staff i mean you go back three weeks ago and they weren't playing great defense heck they were ranked 26th in the national football league the last two weeks they jumped a bunch of spots they're ranked number 11th right now they're not playing good mcnair in this offense has got them off balance and frankly defensively that second quarter was brutal for the seattle seahawks it, it was and that will be a first down by chris brown we thought he was a little nicked up earlier that out a couple plays on that two-minute drive but he's okay there's a look at John Marshall the linebackers coach and acting defensive coordinator with Ray Rhodes the defensive coordinator recovering from the stroke he suffered earlier in the season here's what I do if I'm John Marshall I continue to rotate my defensive lineman because you could see they got tired at the end of that second quarter when McNair was in that two-minute drill you got to heat that rotation up keep these guys fresh for the fourth quarter First and 10, looking screen, and it doesn't develop. And it didn't develop because Grant Wistrom was in the way. Intended for both skates. Tubbs did a great job of continuing to go after Steve McNair. You're going to see Zach Piller is going to let Tubbs go right there. Now, what Tubbs needs to do, don't raise those hands. Run through the quarterback. If he doesn't raise his hands right there to try to get him a bat down, and he just puts his crosshairs right on the shoulder pad of McNair, he has a sack right there. But just for a second, he slows up, tries to raise his hands, Gets his body out of balance a little bit, and McNair was able to unload the football. Second down and 10. Seattle bringing up the eighth man. They think it's run. They get play action instead. Looking for the tight end. Troop, there he is. Troop still going. Is he down? They mark him down, yes. At Seattle's 38-yard line, 29 yards on the pickup by Ben Troop. Boy, he moves well for 270 pounds, doesn't he? Watch him right here. He's just going to run the corner route. He's got Kevin Bentley in man coverage. Takes it out to the corner, and Bentley can't run with him. Hurry up offense by the Titans. The naked boot. The deep throw and a slip down at the last minute by Roby. But, Tim, that last catch by Troop really puts the Tennessee Titans tight ends on another level. They now match the 1979 Oakland Raiders for 128 receptions as a group, at least 128 receptions as a group, and that's third place in NFL history for tight end groups. They've so been, that shows you the production. They've been very good all year long. Troop's been part of that. Aaron Kinney, of course, their top receiver. There's Bo Scaife, the rookie six-round pick out of Texas. A lot of production, bunches of production. Heck, when you talk about the 79 team for those tight ends all season. Brown, Brown with a little. And it's right down the middle of the field. Seven yards. Seahawks came into the game ranked 10th in rushing. Watch them working on the double team. Hartwig right here along with Zach Piller. They're going to work here, get movement, and then come to the linebacker. Get the, get the movement. Lofa takes a bad fill. Brown cuts it back. That's good work up front. Good vision by the running back seeing that crease on the backside. Whenever you get your offensive lineman going to the next level, you probably got a problem on the defense. Third and three. Play action fake. Another tight end involved. Troop 
again. Ben Troop, who suffered a concussion last week against Houston, fought his way back, gets the starting nod today with the injury to Aaron Kinney, and he comes up with another catch. Really sells the block here and does a good job with it, because here's Troop, he comes in motion. He's going to flash in here like he's blocking, going to reverse pivot and then just get out to the little open area against the zone. You see, he just flashes right out, gets behind the safety. Norm Chow's doing a great job. He's got he this defense off balance big time right now for Seattle. This by far is one of the best we've seen this offense look this year. Outside bounce by Brown and slips down at the last second. Trufant was coming up for the tackle. But going back to Troop, four catches for 75 yards on the day. You're giving up 75 yards to a tight end. That means the middle of your, your field is suspect. Well, they, they started to exploit that in the second quarter when they got the tight ends involved. And let's remember now that Seattle is without one of their starting linebackers today, D.D. Lewis. So Kevin Bentley's out there. He's filling in. He's gotten beat a couple of times by Ben Troop. You see the Tennessee Titans today in the red zone. Going up against a team that was number two in the NFL in red zone. This one, touchdown, Bennett. Drew Bennett with his second touchdown today, his third of the year. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage out here on Jordan Babino, and here's Babino here. Bennett's just going to take the inside. Babino slips and falls down, and it's over. Right there, done. McNair spots it and then throws a dart in between the safety and the corner for the touchdown. Drew Bennett, we said earlier, had that broken thumb earlier in the season. Missed three games, had a cast on as Veronis adds another one. Talked to him before the game, he said it's feeling better. Well, I guess so. 21-14 tight. Fox NFL Sunday is sponsored by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 40. Tim Ryan, Ron Pitts, Maria Black back here in Tennessee. And a quick look at the scoring drive, and that's the first time Seattle, and this is the first time Seattle has trailed since November 27th against the New York Giants. That's the last time they played bad defense, too. Go back to San Francisco the week before that. They weren't playing very good on the defensive side of the ball. Scobie trying to break it outside. He's pushed out of bounds at close to the 30-yard line, driven out by Andre Wolfo. The tide has turned here in Tennessee. Fox NFL Sunday is sponsored by Ford F-150. Built Ford Tough. All the records on the wall, the gold records at the Country Music Hall of Fame here in Nashville. And look at the total yards the discrepancy there has kind of <laughs> evened out. <laughs> Offense trying to get something going for the Seahawks. Max Strong, and Max Strong is in the Tennessee Territory. Steve McNair has eclipsed the 3,000-yard passing mark for the fourth time in five seasons. And he's done it by doing this right here, spreading the ball around. Started with his wide receivers in the first quarter and then got the tight ends involved in the second quarter. And they've continued on here in the third. And it's allowed Drew Bennett and some of the other guys to get into the end zone. Morris in motion. Easy throw inside to Daryl Jackson. And Jackson will move the chains. He's down at about the 36-yard line. The turning point was the blocked field goal. Antoine Oda blocked it, finally recovered by Lamont Thompson, and from that point on, it seemed like the Tennessee it's Titans been a different game. It's been a different game. Titans have had the momentum and haven't let off. And they stepped on the gas with that block, Ronnie, and they haven't stopped since then on offense or defense. 242 yards and three touchdowns by Tennessee since that block by that man, Antoine Odom. 18 yards of total offense and added a little more after that pass play and the run there since the block for since it, for uh, Seattle. Second down and eight. On the roll, looking for Ingram up the field. 
and a desperation no. throw. Well, this shows the athleticism of Travis LeBoy. Remember I talked about it in the second quarter that they were going to set him up with all this action so they could boot Hasselbeck out of there? Well, they do it, and LeBoy is able to get on his horse and get enough speed that he gets Hasselbeck down and gets the sack. Yep, technically a sack right here, Travis LeBoy. Maybe that's why he crashes so hard, because he knows he's got the athleticism to retrace his steps, mm -hmm. that being LeBoy and getting back outside. Good work by him. Empty backfield. Third and 16. Quick throw. It's up in the air. Incomplete. Nothing going on right now against the Tennessee Titan defense. Don't forget, a win today clinches the first round by and ties a team record for most regular season wins with 12. A win plus a Chicago loss later on would mean home field throughout, but that has to be the furthest thing from Mike Holmgren's mind right now. No, there's there's a lot on the line right now. And Mike knows it, and you wonder if this team is starting to panic a little bit. Even Hasselbeck told us last week that they really fear losing. It's been nine straight, and there's a genuine fear that they won't get it done. Bruin going for the inside the five, and he may get it. And they can't make it work. Pruitt had a chance to bust it back, but he couldn't do it. Tennessee has come back here in the third quarter. On the left, Bob Casulo, the special teams coach for the Seattle Seahawks. On the right, Etrick Pruitt. And he's a little fired up at Pruitt because he no, felt he Pruitt, be. had a, Pruitt had a chance to stop that ball from going into the end zone. He did. That was just Pruitt not being aware and finding that ball when it was in the air. First and ten run, Brown. Nothing happened in there. Kevin Bentley. And this is the punt that should have been down. And there's Pruitt. He never finds the football. He never finds the ball when it's in the air. He, would, he should have went back, put his heels on the two-yard line, and just went up and made a catch on that football. <laughs> Ruin had a good punt, and now you, you can see Casulo, the coach, letting Pruitt have it in his ear hole. Yep. Just put your Because you know why? Up. At the end of the day, that's two first downs. That that's is. 20 yards of hidden yardage that doesn't show up except to the coaches. And they need a big play bad. They need pass rush. Going for Bennett. And a marker is down at the 28-yard line. They call it a catch. McNair is and down. McNair is down as well. He took a bad hit from Tubbs. Here's Marcus Tubbs right here. He's going to penetrate and just get a nice shot, a late shot on Steve McNair. Illegal contact, number 27. That's late. That's late. They call illegal contact by Babino right there. Yep. And we saw the same instance of that on the other side of the field in the first half against Marcus Trufant. They bit on the pump and go and had to make contact to avoid the big one. Starks was lucky that wasn't called a, a uh, unnecessary roughness, roughness right. a roughness on the quarterback. And I'm telling you, this defensive line is frustrated right now. They're used to getting to the quarterback. They haven't gotten there all day. So when they're a step or two late, they've still put some ill-advised licks on McNair. Troop is wide open again. The play-action pass is killing the Seahawks' defense. Babineau's got a tough time staying on his feet out here. That's all there is to it. I mean, Ben Troop is chewing him up with these corner routes. Here's Troop here. Here's Babino. He's going to take the corner. Watch Babino turn and lose his balance again. Right there. <laughs> Loses his balance, almost trips and falls on his face. And Troop exploits him on that corner route again. Five catches for 111 yards for one man alone. And that's Ben Troop, the second round pick last year out of Florida. More passing, going for Bennett in the end zone in the corner, and it's incomplete. Broken up in the last minute there by Jimmy Williams. Boy, Steve McNair is in his groove right now. Look you at think? this throw off the run to Ben Troop. You can't get it any better. I mean, he's rolling to his right. He's on the run, drops it right in the bread basket, and then watch this one on the go route to Bennett. You can't make a better throw than that. Tell me this guy can't play two or three more years if he wants right, to. Right, right. 
as we've talked before a big contract issue for him he's got a 50 million dollar bonus due that the team is going to have to either give him or reconstruct some kind of way going end zone and it's incomplete intended for guess who again been true As you and I were watching film during the week and on Friday and even into yesterday, why isn't this offensive line performing better? What's wrong with this group? Why aren't they running the ball better? Yeah. Why aren't they having more success? I'll tell you, they found their niche today against the Seattle team. Absolutely. This is the number one sack group in pro football. They have kept them off McNair all day long, and they've opened up some good running lanes at times for Chris Brown and Jared Payton as well. Big, big game by the front five of the Tennessee Titans on offense. And the first career 100-yard day for Truth. Fumble looked like he dropped the ball there and got it back. Chris Brown out to about the 20-yard line, but won't be enough. And they'll bring on the field goal unit. And this is what they want to do to you. Perfect example. Watch Benji Olsen right here. Rocky Bernard, he's a load now. He's a heck of a player. Watch Benji Olsen maul him. That's the physical prowess, I guess you'd say, for that offensive line that they want to bring to the line of scrimmage every Sunday. And that hasn't consistently been the case all year. For this Titan football team. Baronis from 38. He was good from 50 plus easily in practice and in pregame. Edges this one in. And the Titans continue to pour it on. 24 14 here with 6 14 to go in the third quarter. You know, it's a cardinal sin in all of football as you look at Mike Holmgren here, but. You have to begin to wonder if the Seattle Seahawks coming into this game were thinking a little bit ahead to that big matchup next week against the undefeated Indianapolis Colts in Seattle. Josh Scoby. Scoby avoids, still going up the field. The marker goes down as Scoby gets out close to the 30 yard line. Ronnie, even the players told us that. You know, they're aware of what's going on with the other clubs around the NFL. It's not like we're locked in a box and That's right. we don't understand that we need to only win two of the next three. Holding this, number 35 during the return. Ten yards, first down. Well, I'll tell you, it's not going to get any easier with Indy next week and then having to travel to Green Bay for the finale. The NFC playoff picture. The Seattle Seahawks have clinched the division. They're looking to get a win here for that first round bye. It's going to be wacky watching this thing come down the line. The Giants win yesterday. Chicago plays tonight. They could go to 10 and 4. Carolina's winning right now, 17 7 over New Orleans. They could go to 10 and 4. And then this picture running in the AFC. And this right here, remember, Pittsburgh does owe the tie, own the tiebreaker over San Diego. San Diego's beating Indy right now, 16 to nothing. Bobby Ingram on a breakout. Ingram down to the 30-yard line, make it the 25-yard line of the Tennessee Titans. 56 yards and a much-needed big play for the Seattle Seahawks. And you get a missed tackle. A couple things that open this. The running back's going to flash there, which pulls Sermon. Ingram's going to be here, drops right into that voided zone, catches the ball, and then breaks the tackle. And that's just a bad mm -hmm. effort by Ronaldo Hill. It is. I mean, he doesn't even get his hands on him, get his head in front. And then Ingram takes off for a big, big game. Plenty of time for Hasselbeck. He's got Jackson. And Jackson is inside the five. Lamont Thompson, the safety, on the coverage. d -Jack just comes out of the slot here, Ronnie. And Lamont Thompson's got to pick him up in man. So he's there. Now Lamont's got to try to get over the top in trail with him bad matchup and that's a bad matchup a safety on daryl jackson remember now he had 29 grabs in the first three games of the season before he got hurt he can play seahawks knocking at the door pack it in motion going backside to jira Fishes. touchdown hawks a marker is down at the three yard line hold everything Could go against Tennessee. I believe it will. Offside, 92 defense. Coons decline. The play is a touchdown. 
Albert Hainsworth is off sides. The touchdown counts for Joe Jerevicious. Bad job by Adam Pacman Jones. Look where his eyes are. They're right there to the backfield running. He's got to cut off the inside to Joe Jerevicious on the slant route. Jerevicious takes the inside right from him. That's too easy from the quarterback to a 6'5 receiver on a slant from inside the five yard line. That's part of the maturation process of a young corner, knowing where you're at and what you can't give up on the field. Brown adds another one. And the Seahawks, just that quick, pull within three. Big plays will always help you win games. The last undefeated team throughout an entire NFL season, the Miami Dolphins with the record 14-0. Back in 1972, Marvin Harrison and company trying to get that record. But as you say, Tim, Staying undefeated in this business is not easy. Yeah, they've and got right it all now, wrapped up. They, they've got home field through they the They got AFC. everything except that record. That's right. And right now they're down 16 zip in the third quarter to the San Diego Chargers in Indianapolis. Figure that one. Pac-Man Jones at the four. Look for the reverse. They fake it. Jones with a lane runs into his own man and can't break it out. Boy, he had something going for a while. Ran into Eugene Amano. That's why you keep the offensive lineman <laughs> out of the way. Boy, this rookie's exciting. He's like a road runner. You watch him run. Flat-footed, that straight-up posture. Runs right into oh. his backup center. Dude, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Get off the ground. He's fun to watch and explosive as can be. Talking to Chuck Cecil, the, the secondary coach, Jeff Fisher. And when you talk about Carlos Rogers, you talk about Antrell Roll and those other first-round picks in this year's cornerback class. They're elated with what they've gotten out of Pac-Man Jones. They know they've got the right guy. First and 10, they'll start off with the run. A missed tackle in the backfield by Wistrom. And Brown is able to get a couple out of it. Tadupu you know, finally brings him down. Ronnie, maybe more movement here in the second half by the Seattle defensive line up front. And you're going to see Wistrom. He's going to come flying in here on a jet charge, which is an inside stunt inside the tackle. He misses the tackle there in the backfield, but makes Chris Brown go sideways just enough. Redirect and you redirect him enough to where now a you know a six-yard game doesn't become a 16-yard game So maybe more movement utilize that quickness up front your speed advantage that you've got over this mauling offensive line Second down and four Down again Looking for the cutback not all there nice job by Tubbs the defensive tackle Tubbs just does a super job of staying on his feet. This is the hardest thing backside as a defensive tackle when you've got a run going away from you is staying up on your feet. Tubbs is here. These guys are going to come and try to chop him down. Pretty good athleticism for a 335 pound man to stay on two feet and then go in there and get yourself a tackle and force him into a, a big third down. The first round pick last year out of the University of Texas. Had a slow start last year, but he stayed in the Seattle in the offseason last week last year and been able to pick it up McNair trying to find somebody to throw to it in and out of the hands of Calico And he's had a couple drops in the last few yeah, weeks. Yeah, he has and this one he should have caught too I tell you what Seattle has done their adjustment. They've jumped into man coverage and it's gotten better They're sitting in man coverage out here across the perimeter running with guys and then you're going to see McNair take off. Now, Calico stays with him, does a good job, everything except the catch. You've got to come up with that. Two, I mean, he dropped two touchdowns last week against Houston. Not just drops. Those were touchdown passes. Titans very good in punt coverage. They lead the NFL, allowing just 3.5 yards. And here's a fake. Donnie Nicky, the backup safety, comes with the fake. And nobody saw it coming from the Seahawks, including that man, well, special teams coach Bob Kasula. He should have, because Tennessee has done it all year long, especially in a game like today. Jeff Fisher told us before the game, got some surprises for you. And here's one of them, Nikki, the up back. He's just going to run an angle route to the sideline. You're going to get a good block here. Nobody goes with him. Here's the guy, the gunner's running down the middle of the field, wide open. Very opportune play call. Nice job by Alan, Al, Alan Lowry, the special teams coach, 
Jeff Fisher and the boys over there for the Titans. Well, you remember two years ago we came back here, and I think they had like a fake in each of the first five or six Against games. New Orleans that day, I remember that. Play action, looking down the middle of the field for Troop. That one's thrown behind. One of the rare bad passes. One of the rare hits on Steve McNair in this yep. football game. And they haven't gotten pressure on him at all for most of the day. That way, He's been razor sharp. If you get in his grill a little bit and you get defensive linemen up in his face now, like any quarterback, he's going to throw up an errant throw or two, and that's one that you can come down with as a defense. And if you look at McNair's wristband, not only does he have the standard playlist on the wristband, but he's got a little, you know, a little, a little flip, flip top. top. Yeah, yeah. A little flip Maxwell. Top. Flip tops are in vogue, man. Did you know that? Yeah, a little Maxwell Smart <laughs> secret compartment. <laughs> oh, shit, man. In trouble throws and that's incomplete and a blatant marker goes down. I don't know if Hopkins was downfield or maybe one of the other offensive linemen. I'm not sure. I think it's going to be on Hopkins. It looks like. Oh, he's clearly, clearly past the line of scrimmage. He's five or six yards down the line of scrimmage. We saw him do this a lot Offensive last week, pass too. Pass interference, number 72. 10 yards, repeat second down. You're right, he, he was, was down. walking downfield before the ball was touched. There it is. There's Hopkins. He's just going to sit here now. He's going to come to the next level. McNair's still rolling out with the ball in his hands. And he's going to go hit that guy. The ball's in the air. That's pass interference. They could have got him either way. Got him with a pass interference. Could have got him with an illegal man down the field. Yeah. Watch they got a ball they, we saw it against Houston, and I guarantee you Mike Holmgren before the game went up to Gerald Austin and said, look, when these guys run their screens and they run this misdirection stuff, you'll see their offensive linemen illegally going past the line of scrimmage before the ball's been out. Second and long distance. Here comes Fisher. It's unloaded. Roby underthrown but caught. Courtney Roby with a big-time catch, and they move the chains on a second and 20. And McNair stood in there, took another hit, and delivered. What an adjustment by Roby. Watch him take it right here to the inside. But Bulware coming over the top goes for the kill shot rather than the football. That's underthrown. He's going to have to break it back in. Uh, oh, he was going for the He was going for he, he the ball. He thought he had a pick. He didn't see the player. McNair never knew Roby was firing back in. He thought that ball was so bad, it was going to be an easy interception. 32 yards with a rookie out of Indiana, the third round pick this year, Courtney Roby. Back to the run game. That's it's real it. simple, Ronnie. I mean, good adjustment by Roby, bad yeah. adjustment by Bowler. Advantage Titans, they make the play. Tim, you alluded to it earlier. This defense just looks like they are completely in the mix. They don't know what to expect next. And, and credit to Norm Chow. That's where you want to have the opposing defensive coordinator. Time winding down here in the third quarter, a second and eight. Two tight end set inside to that second tight end, dropped by Troop. Pass is incomplete. Here he is in the slot, just going to run this little skinny post right inside here. Bulware does a real nice job out and then in, and then to separate that football yep. from him. Comes in with the right hand and knocks it down and then finishes with the left hand. Good work by Michael Bulware, the strong safety. Second year man out of Florida State. The converted linebacker at Florida State. Now making the transition very nicely at strong safety, third and eight. Plenty of time. Throw inside, throw Scaife. Scaife is down to about the eight yard line. That's a, a big shot by Leroy Hill. That's close to a first down right there. Yep. Jeff wants a little time to think about it. Wait a minute. He said, I hear you. I say you get your points. This team has proven to me that they're not very good on fourth down. And if this ends up being a fourth down against a quality, quality opponent like the Seahawks, get points while you can. And what are they on fourth downs for the year? I'll tell you this. It's not very good. Mm -hmm. And Jeff has gone for a bunch of them. 13 of 55 on third down conversion. Fourth down conversion.
the next big thing. Everybody's ready for the next big thing. Happy holidays, and we are back at the Coliseum in Nashville starting the fourth quarter. The Tennessee Titans up by three, threatening to score here. A fourth down and one, and the Titans, as you look at, look at that. A discrepancy game, there. The last two games and what they've allowed on defense in the pass yards. McNair has scissored them up today for 309. Titans have converted eight of 24 fourth down attempts on the year. This is going to be work. And they won't get it. Denied by the Seahawks. And you made the point, Tim. That's a go bad for move. your, go for your points. Move. It's a bad move. And I know Jeff will go for it. He's got nothing to lose, and they're a four and nine team. But if you want to win, and it's against a quality opponent like the Seahawks, who obviously can put points up in a hurry, you get your points while you can. Just an outstanding job of the guys, the defensive line at the point of attack. Rocky Bernard doing a great job. Leroy Hill forcing that thing sideways. And once you get Chris Brown going sideways, there's too much heat, too much speed on that defense. They're going to track him down sideline to sideline for a big fourth down stop. Like you say, as soon as you start going sideline, especially on a fourth down play, you're done. So the Seahawks will take over on about the 11th yard line on downs, make it the 12 yard line. Oh, nice play. Last drive there. Look at this. Yep. Look at this. What Sean Alexander's done since the first quarter. Yep. Check that ball mark at about the seven yard line. You know who's been quiet since also since the first quarter? Jeremy Stevens. Yeah. Hasn't done a lot since his touchdown early in the football game. Jared Vicious on the turn route, and he opened up just in time for Hasselbeck. And that would be good enough for a first down. Sean Alexander been very quiet in the second half of this game, but on the season. Not historically, baby. He usually picks it up in the second half, but he's been on the sideline a lot in this second and half. And I think they need to run it. I think his defense has spent a lot of time on the field, Seattle, so give Sean the football. Let him run. Let him chew some time off this clock. You give your defenders some rest, and you keep a red-hot Steve McNair. Remember I talked earlier, it's about controlling tempo of your Tennessee and keeping Hasselbeck and Sean and all those guys over on the sideline. Now the tables have turned. If you're Seattle, you run your system, you run your offense, but you certainly mix in a few more runs than maybe you normally would. Keep that red-hot McNair over there on the sideline. Sean Alexander, over 100 yards on the day, 104. Throw inside and a big hit. Jackson, he holds on to it. Let's go to Los Angeles for this game break. Hey, Ron and Tim, you'll really love this move. Take a look at Jake DeLome here hooking up with Steve Smith. Nice little spin move there. Steve Smith, second touchdown of the day. One rushing, one catching. 12th of the season. Panthers up 24-7. That in the third. Back to Ron and Tim. All right, JB, thank you. Back to Alexander. Not a lot. The boy in on the tackle, along with Peter Sermon. Sean Alexander, the NFC Offensive Player of the Week, three times. If you look at Kyle Vandenbosch there. You know, they just talked about Steve Smith, and we showed JB showed Steve Smith having a great year, and certainly worthy of Comeback Player of the Year coming off of his injury, but. Kyle Vandenbosch is as well having a super season with his 12 and a half sacks. Second down and eight. Pressure. The throw caught Jackson. And let's see where they mark it. He's going to be a little short of the first down. Thompson on the tackle. Well, nice work by D Jack, Daryl Jackson, and Hasselbeck in a little option route because the blitz is coming. Here's Tank Williams right here. Here's Daryl Jackson. The blitz is going to come. He's just going to come out and come right to this open spot. And Matt finds him wide open. So you run the corner off deep with a clear out route. And then drop D-Jack right underneath. 
They give him a spot there on the last second lunge for the first down. The rollout, he's pointing to go for somebody. Instead, he throws it down inside to Jeremy Stevens. That's great work by Ryan Hannum. You know, an under unheralded player. Watch him here at tight end. Watch him seal Vandenbosch. I mean, that's not supposed to happen. He seals off a guy that may be going to the Pro Bowl as a defensive end, gives his quarterback the edge, makes a nice, clean throwing lane from Hasselbeck to Jeremy Stevens. We are talking about Alexander. And Alexander's last run, he became only the fifth player in NFL history with consecutive 1,600-plus yard seasons. And there he goes again. Another big breakout run for Sean Alexander. Padding that 1,600-yard mark. Thirty-two yards. I'd like to know what the defensive end here is doing. I think it's Odom. He ends up up the field. Sean just runs right by him. Oh, Lockler was hanging on to him. That's what happened. And then Sean gets out there, makes a couple guys miss, and then miss, and then there's his vision. Yeah, Lockler had held on to Odom just enough. Got the nice block from Max Strong, and then Sean makes it happen. Cut back against the grain. We'll get the call again, and Alexander. Big runs are nothing new to him. Leads the NFL with 13 runs of 20 or more yards. Had a big 52-yard run earlier today. Oh, man. Watch Daryl Jackson right here. He's going to go try to block Keith Bullock. You want to play slot receiver in this league, Ronnie? Yeah. Watch this. Oh, it was, he just flipped him up big time. It was worse than real speed. A flip outside to Ingram. Ingram with a nice move. Good job, Bobby. And he's out of bounds inside job, the five yard line. That's a big first down That's by a huge Bobby Ingram. First down. It's coming right here out of the slot again. There's that clear out route. Forces Lamont Thompson to slip, takes off, and gets just enough to get past that red flag for the first down. He's enjoying a real nice year. Remember, he hurt those ribs earlier in the season. And He's been explosive now, getting in the end zone. Ain't three touchdowns in the last couple of weeks. Starting to find his groove. First and goal on the rollout. And it's incomplete. Looking for Stevens, but Stevens, he had Thompson all over. Where's Juravicious? That's who they need to get in the football game when they get down here into the red zone. Second and goal from the Look at that. Remember we talked last week about that 1,000-yard benchmark? 16 games not a big deal for these guys anymore two consecutive seasons 1600 plus Sean Alexander only the fifth player in NFL history to do so Alexander will get the call looking for end zone It'll be about two yards short I'll Tell you you know Sean as nimble as he is he can run strong too I mean, he can get in there and push a pile, and rarely is one guy going to take him down. See, he just keep driving and get that thing down to about the two-and-a-half-yard line. Let's see if they go over the – well, it's third down here now. Do they run it and go, go to the money zone to this left side over here, or do they find this tight end, Jeremy Stevens? Backside, wide open, Jackson. Can he get in? Yes. Touchdown, Seahawks. Perfectly executed play. And that's why the Seahawks lead the NFL on third down in two or less situations. And hard to stay with Daryl Jackson. Watch him here. He's going to come back and he's going to yo yo motion, then come back across the formation. See him break it down, now come back across. Lamont Thompson took two steps inside. That was enough to get out flanked. Gave Daryl Jackson the edge and enough for the touchdown. Matt Hasselbeck's numbers there in the red zone. And you want your quarterback to be at his best when he gets down here. Right now, Matt Hasselbeck is at his best when he can see the end zone. The Seahawks take the lead back here in the fourth. We're back in the fourth quarter here in Tennessee. Matt Hasselbeck with his 58th career red zone touchdown and a look at the drive. And Tim, it feels like 
each team has to have at least one big play per drive to go down and score. A yeah, very good drive by Hassel, but nice job by Alexander with a couple of big runs as well. Pac-Man Jones. Boy, he pours it up in there nice, doesn't he? Out to the 35-yard line, 31 yards on the return. 28-24, Seattle. And a quick comparison here in the last four games for both quarterbacks. And the thing that stands out for me is the quarterback rating. I mean... You want your guys to be good in November and December, but coming down the stretch here, right? I think very people good. understand that Hasselbeck has been terrific. I think <laughs> McNair's numbers surprise you, but they won't today because yeah. both of these guys have been awesome with their completion percentage, getting the ball in the end zone. You look at the quarterback ratings. Both quarterbacks have been terrific in this football game. Tennessee will stay with the two tight ends in the game. McNair getting out of the pocket. Bennett wide open on the sideline. He was just standing there waiting for the ball. They haven't been able to get a beat on Bennett all day. 12 yards. I'll tell you, for a guy that can't scramble anymore, and that's what they say here in Tennessee and around the National Football League, number nine, Steve McNair, still got a little escapability, doesn't he? What does that tell you? You just have to be able to move efficiently you inside know the pocket to go. and where you to go. You've got to know where to go with the football and how to move just enough, and he's done that all day. I do not like the zone defense by Seattle. I thought they got chewed up with it in the second quarter, also at the beginning of the third. Once they dropped into man and became more aggressive, they had more success against those receivers and getting pressure on McNair. They'll go back to the run in Brown. Tennessee Titans, a team coming into this season, as we said earlier, purged by the salary cap. Had to let go of a lot of high-impact guys. Had to go with a lot of rookies. In fact, that's the first thing that Jeff Fisher said in the meeting earlier in the season when we were here. He said, look at our roster. Yeah. You see twos, threes, R's, R's for rookies, young players. They've got so many guys from the last two drafts that are active on this football team. And you talk about the 47 players. It's an, I mean, they're an amazingly young football team. And that one just thrown away seemingly intended for troop well they got pressure they can't make it work they brought the pressure with Bentley and Lofa Tatupu and they both came unblocked and then here's a look at this 2004 draft class I mean look at all these guys this is just this is out of last year's draft all of those guys active on the roster out of 47 guys then you add it to this year look at this 24 one of their 23 picks from 2005 are active from the last two years it's amazing Chance for the Seahawks now to get off the field third and long. See, back in the day, you talked about five, six guys making your roster as rookies. And Roby is hit hard. He got his back bowed up he under got him, didn't bent he? back. Williams in on that shot. Let's see where the mark is. Could be a close one. Here's Roby here, and just watch him drop inside. He's going to get high load here by the defenders. Someone's going to get him down low here, Leroy Hill, and then Jimmy Williams takes him up top and hyper extends his back. Well, he's lucky he's got he got his knee out from under that pile. Yep. That had ACL written all over it. You bring on the chain. Yeah, he's going to be a a good half yard short on that one. Decision time once again for Jeff Fisher. They went for it. Earlier, down by the goal line, came up short, tried to Jeff run outside go, with Jeff Brown. Jeff will go for it again. He's got nothing to lose. I, I my opinion, I'd punt it. Well, and they, I'd punt it. They lined up for a punt on fourth down, faked it, and converted the first down. I mean, look at how many times they've gone for it on fourth down this year. Stats show they're not going to get this. Straight ahead, he'll have to get on the second effort, and he did. The first effort wasn't there. They clogged up the middle pretty good. Bowler had him, too. There's the strength of Steve McNair, a 32-year-old guy that's still got a lot of juice left in those legs. They didn't mess around with that outside run stuff anymore, No, they did didn't. They? Because watch <laughs> Bowler come flying out here, and he's just going to have a collision with Steve McNair, but McNair oh. goes nowhere. You see him? He just keeps driving, keeps his feet. Bowler's going to lay the hat on him now. Pow! Right there, but McNair, McNair can absorb it and has the strength in his lower body to pick up the first down. First for 10, play action. 
throw back across his body and it's complete to Troop. Troop will go down at the 35 yard line. A pickup of seven. Have you noticed that Norm Chow has started to move this pocket around now that the pressure is heated up for Seattle? They've jumped into some different stuff. They've got some man coverage going. They brought the, brought the blitz a couple of times, started to get pressure on McNair, and right away the adjustment from Norm Chow upstairs, let's move the pocket. Let's move, let's sprint Steve out to the right, sprint him out to the left, avoid some of those heavy hits he's been taking here now over the last drive or two. Second down and three. Brown inside for a few. Offensive plays for both teams. Remember the contrast early in the game? Yeah, that's evened out. The total yards, that's evened out as well. Everything happened when Antoine Odom blocked that field goal. This has been a different football game ever since then. Seahawks got on the board first. The first two scores, one 22-yard touchdown to Jeremy Stevens, then one-yard touchdown run to Alexander. Then Tennessee came back with the next three scores. Third down and two. Looking for Bennett going deep. Underthrown ball incomplete. If he throws that ball right, that might have been an easy six. He did throw it late because you're going to watch Bennett. He's going to go right here, and he's going to run this eight route, Ronnie, which is that inside go route, and he gets by Trufant. Trufant, number 23, is trying to run with him there. Now, he's got him beat. McNair throws it late. It ends up being underthrown and allows Trufant to come back inside and swipe that right hand yeah. at it. Boy, and Marquand, Mar Marquand Manuel was going for the head shot. A blow upside the head. We got another fourth down conversion they're going for here now. Fourth and two. That one will fall incomplete. Think about this. Think about this now. When, when the last time they went for it, the two times before this, and they should have kicked the field goal. I mean, they're lining up for a, a field goal to get up by one rather than not having the football. The Seahawks by four, and we've talked a little bit about it in the break, Tim, not going for that field goal and not getting your points. Well, Baronis you is a good kicker now. Yeah, he, he's, he's, he's had a pretty good 50. year. Yep. And if they'd have gone for it earlier, he pushed it through the uprights. Now you, they could have lined up and went for a field goal there and had a two-point lead. Alexander, and you're going to see more of Alexander trying to work on the clock here. Don't forget, coming up next, it's game two of our doubleheader, the Cowboys and the Redskins. It's going to be a good one, style. man. Woo! Remember that Monday night matchup earlier in the year? Every, the couch magnet got everybody. Santana everybody went to sleep. Santana Moss. Santana Moss. You think think Roy Williams would be back there as the last <laughs> line of defense if it comes down to that play again? <laughs> yeah, I hope not. Second down and seven. Titans defense has to get off the field. They play man-to-man -man coverage and a completion inside. Jerevicious. They've got to get him, keep him involved, Ronnie, as they venture forward here in the next couple of weeks and try to make that push for the postseason. I know that Daryl Jackson is back, but you've got to keep Joe Jervicious in tune in part of this game plan. Working over here on Ronaldo Hill, man. Coverage, put the brake brakes on, come right back to the football and set himself up. And Joe is a seasoned veteran now. He was with the Giants down to Tampa Bay. Big part of that Tampa Bay team that won the Super Bowl. It's been such a smooth transition, if you think about it. Right from Mike Holmgren's system, or right from John Gruden's system to Mike Holmgren's system, right. and it's been a seamless transition for him because it's a lot of the same stuff. Seahawks are 9-0 since he was mentioned as a starter way back in week five versus the Rams. Alexander, Alexander for a few. The NFC playoff picture, as we've talked about all day, the win here would mean the first round bye this is going to do it. If you look for here, Seattle. if you look there, this is going to do it for the Seattle Seahawks. 13 and 3. They've got 11. They've got to win two of the next three, period. And they've got home field in the Northwest, which is going to be a tough place to play. Carolina, you saw them at the bottom there. They are up 24 to 7 over New Orleans now. And the Bears will the play fourth. later tonight against Atlanta. Strong out of the backfield. Second and six. Alexander, this is going to be a bounce out. 
Gets away from Haynes, gets away from Thompson. And you know, it's funny because Alexander has this knock of not being a very fast guy, but he's listed as a 4-3 from his pre-draft workouts, 4-3-40. He can fly. I mean, that is flying. Well, he's running away from guys. Hainsworth had an angle on him. Thompson came. He runs away from him and picks up another first down for the Seattle offense. Another career high for Sean Alexander. Yeah, look at that. Per whack. That's about what it is, too. Seven yards a whack for Sean Alexander. Yeah. And you got to say it just like that, man, because that's man. what it feels like to the defense. Whacked upside the head. And look at him. They're all stacked inside trying to stop that run. First and ten. Here it comes. Good play by the Tennessee defense. Well, they've jumped into this bear defense, which is just loading up the box, covering up all three guys inside with three big defenders. To me, the hardest defense, defensive front to run against, and you can see why. Everybody gets covered up, you're strong at the point, and then allow your speed to come out from the edges. That's that old 46, that bear defense that Jeff Fisher was a big part of in Chicago, then took it on into Philly in the, in the late 80s. It's the best run defense in pro football. That's why a lot of teams don't run it anymore because they jump in that bear defense. Offenses come right to the line of scrimmage, check right check. to the flat, right to the pass, right to this. So a lot of teams don't run it because it is weak against uh, against the passing game. Well, it's an eight-man front, and if you're going eight, then you're going to play with man-to-man uh, -man coverage yep. in the backfield. And you better have people that can play man-to-man -man coverage. Second time out taken now by Tennessee. Well, they just brought in Rocky one Boyman, extra linebacker here, and took out Ronaldo Hill to play the run. Another run by Alexander. A marker is down late as Alexander falls close to the first down marker. Waiting for Gerald Austin, our referee. The umpire's talking to him, so that tells me maybe a holding call. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk it over and over and over. Still waiting on the call. Here it comes. There's no foul on the play. The blocker put out his leg to trip. He did not make contact. Therefore, it's not a foul. In other words, that's an attempted trip that didn't go right. Tennessee takes their third and final timeout. Third and final timeout for Tennessee. As you look at the scenario once again, and we'll tack on once again a win. Will be a nice plane ride home because all you have to do for Seattle is sit back and watch Chicago play Atlanta tonight. And if they lose, you'll stay at home. Well, and they'll be able to the do that too. Paul Allen, they got him that luxury liner, that Ooh. the owner, and everybody sits back in those satellite leather seats. first class yeah. seats and watch the satellite TV. They'll be watching the football game on the way home and I'll tell you it's going to be a lot better ride if they can finish this baby off and salt it away with a W. They just ran the division, a division that. It without question is weak right now, yeah. but you still have to go through it, and they did. And hoping to exercise some demons in the postseason, one, getting a win in the postseason. But you know what? I, I mean, you talk about the division. They've had quality wins, the Seattle Seahawks, all season long. They go early in the year. They beat Atlanta in their place. They beat Dallas in their place. Yep. They beat the Giants in their place. I mean, those are some good football teams that came to town, and Seattle was able to take care of them. And Mike's been there now. He knows how to sustain this. You think about it. The two Super Bowls back-to-back -back when he was O-coordinator in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Goes to Green Bay. Tutored Brett Favre into a really good quarterback. Two Super Bowls back-to-back. -back. Right. Mike understands it now and, and really knows what home field is all about. He's a big, big third down for his offense. Look for Alexander here. He's 13-13 in this situation. And there it is. You think maybe they knew that? Execution. Boy, what a block by we'll Tobek. Always win. Tobek yep. just did an outstanding job up inside. I mean, watch Tobek right here on Hainsworth. That's a tough block. Remember what I told you earlier? They're going to go one way and then you take them. Hainsworth tried to go that way. Robbie Tobek just rides him right by. Creates of enough crease for Sean to fall forward for the first down. That's the two-minute warning.
We're under the two-minute warning, and Sean Alexander continues to stay good in the fourth quarter. That's a 10 up there. They got it right in the stands up there, huh? In the first quarter, he had 91 yards. In the second and third, he had four and three, respectively. And then in the fourth quarter, he turned it back up with 74 yards. I guess that breathing thing when you go on those lines, I guess that helps, huh? Tennessee has no timeouts. They can't stop it. And the key plays will start with the fourth down stop on Chris Brown. Got him running sideways, and that was huge. And the touchdown coming later. That was after that Jackson. fourth down stop. Yep. And the fourth down miss, a miscommunication. But you made a good point, Tim. When Seattle went to man-to-man -man coverage and left the zones alone, things changed. You didn't see the tight no. ends running up the field scot-free. You didn't see Drew Bennett you standing gotta, you wide You got to put open. pressure on a seasoned quarterback that yep. understands how, how to window shop. You know what I'm saying? And he could, exactly. McNair could window shop into those zones all day. And as soon as the second half, third quarter came around, they started pressuring him a little more, more man coverage, more blitz. They were able to have more success defensively were the Seahawks. Now defensively, though, they gave up a little bit. They'll be in the meeting room bright and early on Monday figuring out some things because remember this tape goes around the NFL and don't think that Indy and the other teams especially the NFC playoff teams coming in won't look at that what's Ray Rhodes saying right now <laughs> you know Ray. <laughs> <laughs> he's mumbling under his breath our man Ray he's Keep mumbling going, Ray. under his breath about what he wants to harp on when he comes back into the meeting room on Monday I think Michael have to kick him out at four o'clock So the Seahawks will set the franchise record. They will add another win. They will go to 12 wins and actually tie the franchise record. Well, they know one thing. They got to buy in the first week. Mm -hmm. They are sitting in the first week of the playoffs. They've just achieved that with a W. And they sure look like the team to beat. It looks like the road to the Super Bowl for the NFC is going to go through Seattle. So for Tim Ryan and Maria Black, I'm Ron Pitts saying so long from Nashville. The final, Seahawks 28, the Titans 24. Right now, let's take you to the Sprint Game Break Show. Here's James Brown. So long, everybody. Rivalry that means an awful lot now. The first time since Joe Gibbs' his first go around. Biggest game with a lot of meaning since 1992. It'll be the Redskins and the Cowboys. You'll get that coming up later today here on Fox. But right now, let's get you caught up on some of the scores around the NFL taking place today. Let's move with it. All right. We take a look first at Chargers holding to a 1917 lead over the Colts. Five minutes and 54 seconds left in that game in regulation. The coach did intercept the ball in the end zone, so we've got a tight one here. Will the Colts hold on, go ahead and stay undefeated, or will the Chargers knock them off? We will keep you updated on that one. 19-17, Colts ahead in that one. Jaguars, 10-9 over the 49ers. Jaguars, of course, looking for their first 10-win season since 1999. Seahawks were down by 10, ahead of the Titans now by 4. Panthers looking to move a full game ahead of Tampa Bay in the NFC South, ahead of the Saints, Todd Bauman with five turnovers in that one. And the Eagles nursing a one-point lead over the Rams. The Texans with Dan Reeves on the sideline evaluating talent, playing well. A lot of talent they could have been playing well all season. Steelers comfortably ahead of Minnesota. And the Jets have won three straight against the Dolphins right now, trailing that one by four, that one in the fourth as well. Game breakers of the day, Drew Bennett from Tennessee. Terry, Steve Smith, talk about comeback player of the year, having himself an outstanding season indeed. Sean Alexander on the ground getting it done, and Jonathan Wells in place of the injured Dominic Davis for Houston getting it done. You can vote online at FoxSports.com for the game breaker of the day. All right, folks, we're going to take you to a little bonus coverage of some NFL action between the Carolina Panthers and the New Orleans Saints. We'll take you to join our announcers, Kenny Albert, Brian Baldinger, and Jay Glaze.